Happy Wednesday, friends. Welcome back to Hot News. Let's get on right into it as soon as I tell you about today's video sponsor. It's the end of January, and I know that you haven't kept to your New Year's resolutions, but that isn't because we're not trying to help you. And today's video sponsor, Privacy.com, absolutely wants to continue to help you meet your New Year's resolutions when it comes to your budgeting and your financial goals, because Privacy.com allows you to make sure that you're tracking and monitoring everything you're spending on the internet because they give you individualized cards for every retailer and merchant that you work with. Let's say you want to spend less money on music. Well, guess what? You can have a music dedicated card for all your music purchases. That's only $50 a month. That's still a lot of money to spend on music when you can get Spotify for $10. Hey, I'm not judging anyways. The point is, once you go to that limit, you can't spend any more on that card. Bam, financial resolution settled. Do it. Check them out at the link in the video description, privacy.com forward slash UFD, where you can get $5 for free with your first purchase with them. $5 for free with privacy.com. They also have a couple of other memberships, including their pro version, which is $10 a month. You get access to everything that's in the free version that I was just discussing, plus 1% cash back, as well as 36 cards. But then they also have a team version, which is $25 a month, more suited to businesses, where you can make sure that you're monitoring everything that's going on with your business. Plus you get a dedicated account manager, 60 cards a month, and transaction limits tailored to your business needs. So check out privacy.com forward slash UFD to make sure that you're sticking to your financial resolutions this year. It's important. Money's important, my friends. Thanks, Privacy. Now let's go ahead and move on over into the first little bit of news, which is the European Union making its own processors. I mean, typically when you think of high-end computers, you think of the United States and China and never really Europe. Well, they're tired of feeling left out, so they are working on their European processor initiative in bringing HPC processors and computers out into the EU. They're not expected to go online until 2023, but that doesn't mean that they're not specking things out currently. How does HP and memory and PCI Express 5.0 and DDR5 sound, huh? Sounds amazing. Well, that's what apparently they're gonna be using while also combining it with the Zeus version of the ARM processors and so that it can do a whole bunch of stuff. It's based on RISC-V and can do, it can do vector and tensor computing, everything that a modern supercomputer can do. The European Processor Initiative is making sure that their processor based on all of these different things that they're doing is going to actually work and be awesome. And finally, everybody can stop mocking the EU for being so pathetic since Britain left them and that they are actually worthy of being joined as a union because they have high-end computing, okay? This is how you make the UK feel bad for leaving, okay? You make a new computer that they can't have, okay? You'll have to borrow from the United States. Oh wait, they kicked you out over 200 years ago. You're stuck on your sad little island by yourself. And while the EU is readying their high-end computing stuff that they're working on to launch sometime in the near future, it looks like Intel is trying to shift away their low-end computing chips off to another manufacturer. This is actually a rumor that has popped up quite often with regards to Intel struggling to keep up with production requirements with the demand that's outpacing their ability to supply since they're delayed on 10 nanometers. We could go into the story a million times. It just always happens. Well, now the newest rumor coming out of WCCF Tech is that Intel might potentially be moving some of of their lower end CPUs, such as the Pentium and Celerons, over to Global Foundries. One of the reasons they're saying it's Global Foundries now instead of TSMC is because Glofo can make them in the United States and that'll help with socio-political stuff. But at the same time, Intel has always vehemently denied these rumors. They've never actually panned out. Pretty sure this is the fifth or sixth time that we're talking about Intel sending their processors to another manufacturer and every time Intel doesn't do it. So we'll wait and see if this one actually happens, getting the Celeron and Pentiums produced at another factory might help them uh, be able to make everything that they have been failing to make thus far, but not necessarily. So we'll keep you updated if that ever pans out. Otherwise, if you don't hear from us, it was just another made up rumor. What's not made up is that Intel hasn't progressed. And it looks like one of the things that we were supposed to get on the upcoming 400 series of motherboards from them was PCI Express 4.0 to put them on parity with AMD and their new X570 motherboards, which have the latest hard drives. We were expecting that to come out on Intel. Well, apparently that won't happen, which is also delaying the motherboards as well, not to mention the fact that they can't handle the juice that the processors are trying to suck at over 350 watts. Well, now they also have PCI Express 4.0 and it's delayed the launch of Comet Lake potentially to the second quarter. But while they've had delay after delay and issue after issue, 
that doesn't mean that they haven't stopped making money because Intel posts yet another record quarter, large thanks due to their data center group, which saw a whopping 19% increase quarter on quarter. Intel, not struggling. They don't need us casual plebs who want to play video games. They don't need us anymore. They got the data center. That's what the EU is going after, that high-end data center cash. Us, us normal people, pff, they don't need us even though we're the reasons they need data centers to process data. Dang. Do you ever feel useless sometimes? Thanks, Intel. You make me feel like garbage. But good thing your processors are garbage at security. Hey, got you back because the newest, latest speculative execution attack has been unveiled from the University of Michigan. It's called Cash Out. It can steal data from the CPU's L1 cache. It's just an ongoing saga of the speculative execution attacks that have been found in a lot of processors. They're saying that if you have a CPU that was produced before, I believe it was Q4 of 2018, you're likely vulnerable. Although with a lot of these, the hacker has to have physical access to your device and then can steal it from the CPU and at which point like if they have physical access to your computer, you're screwed anyways. So it's not necessarily something to get all up in arms about, but it does show that Intel wasn't worried about protecting their CPUs. They were just worried about making them faster at whatever cost necessary. But you know what? They're, they're rolling in the cash. So who cares? Okay, 19% up in data, data center profits. Well, who, who, who needs anything else? I need more data center money. And then speaking of new CPUs from Intel, uh, MSI has registered new motherboards with the EEC, all of their Z490 listings. This obviously doesn't necessarily mean they're imminent. It just means that they're getting ready to potentially launch at some point. We could see these come out at Computex time, but in case you wanna see the Z490 list of motherboards from MSI, you can check the link in the video description. But let's get off of Intel. Let's get on the AMD hype train because Dr. Lisa Su has been officially appointed to the board of directors of Cisco, which is quite interesting considering their competitive Competitor NVIDIA just purchased Mellanox, who was a competitor of Cisco, for $6.9 billion. So rather than AMD having to fork out the capital to actually buy a company, they just put their influence there. And I'm sure this will create synergy down the line to make fabulous products that they ne don't necessarily have $7 billion to acquire a company for. But congrats to Dr. Lisa Su for just reinvigorating AMD and now also being on the board of directors at Cisco. But you might want to board up everything that you're doing online because if you've been using the antivirus Avast for the past few years, you might want to consider the fact that they have apparently been selling all of your data to a subsidiary company they own known as JumpShot, which has then been sold to a bunch of other companies so that they can have all of your various information of everything that you're doing online, including all of those things that you look at at night that you don't want your mom to know about. Yeah, they sold that information too. Apparently the sensitive browsing data is being repackaged and sold and Avast has responded by saying, well, you could have opted out, okay? One, you always had the choice to opt out even if you didn't know about it. And two, you know, we, we, de we anonymize it. So we de-identify the data and they don't know it's you. Okay, so we're selling all of your data, but shh, okay, it's not you, it's just your data. So stop being upset. You could have, you could have said no at any time. That's the irony of free products, my friends. If you're not paying for it, that means you're the service that, that, that's making the money. So this, this is just something that obviously is going to happen. I stopped recommending Avast years ago when finally Windows Defender got good enough to be just casual enough for everybody who uses it. So in case you're using a vast, maybe reconsider it. Or you like having all of your data sold to the likes of Google, Yelp, Microsoft, Pepsi, Home Depot, Intuit, and other companies, just because it helps them to know you better. And you like knowing that companies know you better because it gives you a sense of intimacy with them and it's something that you're missing in your life. In which case, I'm not judging, go ahead. Go, go use a vest. Speaking of intimacy in your life, we'll say goodbye to it because Warcraft 3 Reforged has finally got its system requirements and it turns out it can basically run on a potato. The minimum specs require a core i3 530, yes, first gen, or an AMD Athlon Phenom 2X4 and four gigs of RAM, and then a GTS 450 or Radeon HD 5750. Those are terrible minimum specs. So you can basically run this on any computer that's been released in the last decade and you're gonna be completely fine. So enjoy Warcraft 3 Reforged. I know a few people are complaining about the fact that it's gonna be a $30 revisualization of it, but other people are okay with it. What do you think of the Warcraft 3 Reforged? Let me know down below in the comments. Are you getting it? You picking it up? You excited? Well, a lot of people are excited for NZXT's new product launch, which is the new Z series 
AIO coolers, as well as an update to the X series Krakens, which seem to be staples in a lot of people's PC builds, thanks to the lights and the little pump that go on the center of it. The Z series has an OLED display where you can display a lot of stuff. We're actually working on a build right now, which is taking us a little while, but we're gonna have a video featuring the NZXT Z series uh, CPU cooler. So yes, it's taking us a little while to work that out, but enjoy, we're, it's gonna be fun. We've had fun making it. Speaking of new products, we're expecting Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip to be announced on February 11th, and it looks like a leaker has finally posted the images of what you can expect it to look like, and surprisingly, it looks better than I thought it would. I'm actually kind of excited for it now that I've seen the images. It looks like it's gonna come in a purple and a black. It will likely also have a 3300 milliamp hour battery, as well as a bunch of other camera stuff. It looks good, I'm excited for it, but it's also expected to cost 1500 euros or probably $1,500. And I'm just not, I'm not gonna spend that much on a phone even if I can flip it. Because as we found out in a previous hot news with Motorola's new Razer, bumps and lumps are normal. And I don't want bumps and lumps in my life. I like a smooth life, okay? I like it just flat, like a pancake. Which, ironically, pancakes aren't flat because if you put them under a microscope, they got hills and valleys and it's crazy. It's not, it's not good. Flat as a pancake is not a good statement. But more phone stuff, it looks like Google Translate might potentially be getting an update for a feature called Transcribe, which is going to provide real-time translation to somebody who's speaking into the phone. This is something that we've seen unveiled in a bunch of other technology. I think even Google had this in their original Pixel Buds as a feature, but it didn't really work. Well, apparently now it has been developed a little bit more and might actually work effectively. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see until the Transcribe feature is actually out to see if it is indeed usable in day-to-day -day situations where you find yourself in a foreign country and don't know how to converse with the local people and you decided not to learn their language before you went because you're a terrible person. You know, those reasons, those things will keep you updated. Speaking of terrible, terrible people, anybody who buys this lamp, I'm gonna have to question your judgment because Dyson has come out with their new light cycle morph lamp. Light Cycle Morph, obviously not a name that you would expect for a lamp, nor is a $650 price point a price that you would expect for a lamp, but this Light Cycle Lamp definitely has all of those features. Apparently the thing that makes it so exciting is that it has the color temperature of the lamp replicate the color temperature outside, no matter where you are in the world. Obviously this doesn't apply to when it's nighttime and then it's dark and then the color temperature is non-existent. And it now has a 360 degree swivel feature where you can project it at the wall or anywhere you want, even in your eyeballs, which then it's like looking directly at the sun, but with accurate color temperature. Thank you, Dyson. My eyes are now burnt out, but correctly. And I'm gonna be correct by ending this episode of Hot News. Don't forget that today's video is brought to you by prophecy.com. Check them out down below at the link in the video description. Get $5 for free and make sure you're sticking to all of your financial resolutions this year. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.